Hey, this is Rob Sutherland from Athens, Georgia. I'm at Good Dirt Studio, and I'm going to make a salt shaker. Not just any old kind of salt shaker. Salt shaker with no holes in the top. So I'm going to center up the piece of clay, and I'm going to go ahead and open. Normally when I open, I keep my thumb fairly flat, but for this one I want to make a very tight diameter hole. I'm just going to guide my finger down in and then bend the last joint like so to make a little bit wider opening down there. And then open it up a little bit so that I can split this. And you can see I'm splitting it much more towards the inner half. So the center is all the way down to the metal of the wheel. And this is going to go down until it's an appropriate bottom thickness, maybe about 3 sixteenths of an inch. I've got 5 sixteenths. I'm going to go a little deeper. I'm going to open this back up so I can get my finger in there without the suction. And then I want to pull the cylinder up. Usually I still end up with too much clay there, so I can always cut a little bit of it off. Go ahead and just needle off an inch or so of that. This is almost like a teapot spout. Just draw it up. The thickness doesn't actually matter because it's invisible. This is the functional part of the salt shaker. I close it down. The key here, which I learned from Warren McKenzie, is the diameter of this hole to make it pour properly, to make it shake properly, is an eighth of an inch. And this bamboo skewer happens to be close to an eighth of an inch. So I'll use it like a little throwing stick and I will collar it down onto that diameter of the stick. And I'll carefully pull it back out. I'm not going to worry about what the top looks there. Like there, it's just going to be hidden inside the form. It won't affect the function at all. Alright, I'm going to create a little bit of extra space out here. This is where the salt's going to sit between that cone and the outer wall. Now I want to pull up this outer wall and close it over this form. Bring that up nice and tall. Keep it nice and tight. And then ideally, you don't have to do this, but I can see water down in there. If you leave water inside the form, it's going to crack as it dries. So I'm going to use a sponge on a stick. Just to sop up the little excess down there. Now I need to close the form. To do that, I've got a little hand position that I use, I call it in my class, as a secret thumb. You drop your thumb behind toward you, and you close between your thumb and index finger of your right hand while you're thinning the form with your thumb and middle finger of your left hand. Once you get it close, just down to the diameter of your finger, you just pull it out, and close it the rest of the way, pinch it off, and then by using the metal rib, you can compress that together. And it may well make a little S crack on the inside, but it'll be fine on the outside, and only the salt crystals will know. Trim off the little excess at the bottom, so you got a nice curve. shape there, pushing down on top, taking advantage of that air pressure. If your walls are thin enough, when you push in one section, it'll bow out in another. And that's the salt shaker. Thanks for watching.